What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Log Black Girl. I think I like that better than Hi Guys. Yeah, I think I like that better. I think I'm going to start saying it, all right? Okay, so get used to it. Let's do it again. What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Log Black Girl. Okay, today's topic is going to be about Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, I watched this Netflix series, and I had been seeing it for a while on Hulu, I think it was, the movie. And I was like, it looked weird and creepy, so I never wanted to watch it watch it but when i started seeing people post about it and saying what it was about and stuff i was like okay well let me watch it and see how it is and if you know me then you know that i'm obsessed with i don't think it's right but i'm obsessed with like watching stuff that got to do with serial killers or documentaries on people who got went missing or killed they stuff or something like that i just love crime stuff like that and mystery stuff like that i'm obsessed with stuff like that so i went ahead and watched a series on netflix and it was kind of interesting and I feel like well why not get on here and talk about it uh yeah I ain't see that many people you know talking about it and you know so I researched some of the stuff because I forgot a little bit you know it's been a while since I watched it and I only watched it once okay so it's been a while okay so Jeffrey Domner, also known as Jeffrey Lionel Domner. He was known to be a Milwaukee cannibal or the Milwaukee monster. I think I'm saying it right. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I don't know. Okay. He was an American serial killer and sex offender who killed and dismembered 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Now look. I wanted to know what he was diagnosed with because you doing stuff like that. You got some serious problems. Okay. Okay, and you know what Google told me? Google told me he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I'm not going to try to say that word, so I'm not going to say it. Um, Personality disorder, and he was a psychotic. Yeah, okay. He was found to be sane at his trial. See, okay, I know they dropped the tapes about his trial and stuff like that, but I did not want to watch it because I was scared. Don't ask me why I was scared. Because they said his voice sounds so creepy. And I said, I'm scared. I don't want to watch it. But maybe I should go watch it. I might I might just go do that. Yeah, I might just go do that. But um, now, this is what got me when I first watched it. His victims was mainly black men. You know what I'm saying? And that did not sit right with me because, baby, I'm black. I'm black. You get me? All right. Now, look. When I watched it. I came to the conclusion as he had a bad childhood, yeah. Okay, so what? But that still don't make you do the things that you did just because you had a bad childhood. Now, I would say it's a root to every problem. Like, I know they said um, something about him having a, what is it called? It was like an urge or something, like something like that. And he tried to fight it or something like that, but he didn't. Keyword didn't. He did not. He could have got help, I feel like. He could have got help and talked to somebody or something like that. I understand his parents weren't around that much. And his daddy, if you really think about it and go back and look at the show, his daddy the one that introduced him to killing animals and dissecting them and stuff. That's where he started that at. And then his daddy want to get mad when that's the only thing that he do. Well, you started him on this. So how you expect him to, you know, you know what I'm saying? He feel like he bonded with you with that. So, of course, he's going to keep doing it. But that still does not give him the right to go do it to people. You know what I'm saying? You could have been a scientist and been doing research on, you know, animals and stuff. You know, something less inhuman. Ugh. But, yeah, I feel like that was the root to the problem. But I feel like he still had, like, once he got older, like teenage stages, I feel like if you really pay close attention to him, which his parents did not, you can see something was clearly wrong with him. And either his parents or him could have got him some help to where he wouldn't have turned out like this. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So back to his victims. He started, correct me if I'm wrong, he killed his first person when he was living in his, was that his daddy's house? Or his grandma's house. I'm not sure if that was his daddy's house or not. But his first victim, it was a white man. He killed him. Yes. The second time, I'm thinking it was another white man in a hotel room. 
I don't know if that, I don't know if that was the second time, but I remember he did that. And I remember watching to where he didn't even realize that he did it. That was the, well, that's when it first started happening. Okay. Now move on forward to when he got his own apartment. And he used to lure black people back to his place. He went to like gay bars and stuff like that. Because if you didn't realize he liked me, right? Okay. So he started going to gay bars and targeting black men, telling them he was a photographer. He would give them money, this and this, this and this, to get them to come back to his house. And they was like, oh, okay, well, I wouldn't take some pictures for some money. Okay, you know, who would turn that down? Okay. And it's like when they got back to his house, he did some inhuman things to him. Like, you would think, you would think that he'll rape them, then he'll, you know. But no, he, this man literally killed them first. Then had sex with them after he killed them. Then that's when he started doing the weird stuff like um, cutting them up and putting certain parts in the acid or putting certain parts in the refrigerator or something like that. And then he always took a picture of his victims. That was creepy as well because who does that? And ew, just who does that? But it was the one the um i don't know if he was chinese vietnamese something like that the little boy um what was his name um i don't know how to pronounce it conorak 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 i'm gonna just say conorak excuse me if i'm saying it wrong he was the one um that got drugged i think he was the one that tried to escape and his next door neighbor jeffrey's next door neighbor um tried to call well no she did call the police and tried to get the little boy some help because the little boy wasn't that old and he had found him at a corner store and bought him some liquor and sent him back to his place you get what i'm saying and come to find out he did the same thing to the boy's brother and i don't think he knew about it at first but yes the police overlooked it because Jeffrey some kind of way convinced them that they, they was together, this and that, and all that, and they overlooked it. And I was when I was watching that part, I was sitting there like, wow. You gonna take his word for it just because he's white? And I feel like they didn't listen to the woman because she was black. That's what I feel like. I feel like if there was a white woman um, saying all that about Jeffrey, I feel like they would have listened. You get what I'm saying? But just because she was black, they didn't listen. Now, y'all know that wasn't the first time that that happened. Um, I I believe it was after this where she was reportedly calling, well, repeatedly calling the police several times because she was hearing strange things come from his apartment. She was smelling bad stuff. You get what I'm saying? And they just didn't want to listen to her. Okay. And then the um, other one, I know he escaped. I think it was Tracy. That was his own name, Tracy. He came back to the apartment and he ended up escaping after he got drugged and before he got killed. He ended up escaping and found the police, well, ran into the police basically. And he told them what happened. They went back to the house. They claimed, keyword, claimed that nothing was wrong. If I'm not mistaken, that's when he got caught, I'm thinking. I think, I think that's when he got caught. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's when he got caught because they seen that, um, yeah, that's when he got caught because they seen the photographs of the bodies um, of the people he killed and stuff like that. And then that's when they arrested him and started going through the whole apartment. But my thing is right here. My thing is right here. If the woman was sitting there repeatedly calling the police because she was hearing weird stuff and smelling weird stuff and different things like that, why didn't y'all come in? Why kept y'all ignoring? I mean, why have y'all kept ignoring her? Like she was out her mind and you know what the reason was because she was black and because he was white and the police was white that's the reason that's what i'm going with because that's like make be for real if it was a white woman they would have came in a hurry i promise you that's injustice seriously 
And that you know how much trauma that woman had to go through? Now, think about it. A single mother with her daughter barely making ends meet. And what if that's the only place she could afford? You know what I'm saying? And she ain't have no choice but to sit there and listen to all that stuff and smell all that stuff. And nobody want to take her serious and, you know, different things like that and believe her. You know how much trauma it is for her? Then, um, I skipped over a part. This part touched my soul in the movie. Well, not the movie. The show. When, what was his name? I don't remember their names. I mean, I remember all their names, but I don't remember who was who. Um... The one that he was in love with, the one that Jeffrey fell in love with, the death one, he was actually in love with him, actually, you know, resisting the urge to kill him and different things like that. And the reason why he was really killing people was because I'm guessing he had abandonment issues. I've seen somebody talk about this, like when you, every person that he invited to his house try to leave just like his parents did or something like that and he always ended up killing them there was a theory they made or something like that and so when the death dude came to his house and they started spending time together you know this and that and then it was one particular one where it was time for him to go back to work he was a model yes he was a model and it was time for him to go back to work and jeffrey did not want him to leave but he ended up letting him leave right but then he had to end up coming back to get his keys or something that he had left. And I was like, Lord, he made it out of there. Why did he go back? But, you know, he didn't know. He thought Jeffrey was, you know, genuine with him, actually, really, you know. And I feel like Jeffrey really did love him. It's just whatever was going on inside his head, he couldn't. He That didn't win over love. That's what, that's what I figured. And he ended up killing him and left the body on the bed for a while that part touched my like it touched my soul like i really think uh uh-uh. i was very emotional during that part i mean every other part was emotional but that one made me really emotional um now let's get back to the part where he got caught so when he got caught they found 17 they found out it was 17 people that he had murdered mm-hmm. 17 people and I think I stopped on the show after the part where he got caught because the trial part, no, I stopped on the part when he was in court and the sister of one of the men that he killed was going off on him. And I didn't want to watch any further because I was like, uh-uh. like for what he did, he don't deserve no sympathy, none whatsoever. Now, when he got into the jail, he ended up getting killed. Now, I know this might sound weird, but I kind of felt bad for him when he got killed because let me tell you why. Let me explain myself. I know there's no reason to feel bad for him. He don't deserve no sympathy. Well, let me t- let me explain myself. So when he got in the jail and he started getting close to the guy, started trying to pray and ask for forgiveness and trying to get his life together, you know, because everybody deserves a second chance. If God can give him a second chance to forgive him, so can you. But that's a lot to forgive for what he did, though. Seriously. But still, I kind of did feel a little bad. Because right when he was getting closer to God and getting himself together, trying to be a better person and trying to resist the urge and trying to get help and stuff like that, uh, another man, he was a black man, he was, um, was kind of crazy, too. Because he said his God told him to kill Dahmer or something like that. And I was like, God will never tell you to kill someone. You get what I'm saying? You don't deserve to to tell somebody when it's time for them to die or not. God does. He did not tell you to kill them. You get what I'm saying? And as I read up on that, I realized that um, he had killed somebody else too. Another man up in there who had targeted black people. And um, he killed Dahmer and he killed the other man that was in the room with Domner because they targeted black people in general but it's one thing to kill them because they killed your people but it's another thing to blame it on God and say he told you to kill someone that was uh uh-uh. but I feel like in the show the part they showed when he was getting killed I feel like he knew it was his time and he was accepting it the way he was just laying there and barely was fighting back you get what I'm saying? And I feel like he was genuinely scared. But he you got to think about something. That's how scared you made those people that you killed. All those black men you killed. Now you see how they feel. 
I mean, it wasn't right for him to kill none of the people. It wasn't right for the man to kill him because that's God's decision. You get what I'm saying? But still, I kind of felt a little bad because he was getting his life together and then he went on ahead and got killed. But um, I wrote down the names of all his victims. So I want to remind y'all of all the black men that died at Jeffrey Dahmer's hand. You know, say their name period so um some of these names i don't know how to pronounce so excuse me if i pronounce it wrong the names of the victims of jeffrey domner were curtis grotner i think that's how you say it stephen mark mark hicks richard Garo, Garo, i don't know how to say that part jeremy wimberger jamie doxitator ricky becks or ricky beaks and something like that oliver L- lacy erol Lindsay, Kenrock, and I do not know how to say the last name, so y'all please don't bash me, because I don't know how to say these people's names, but I'm trying. Okay, you got Ernest Miller, Anthony Hughes, Joseph Bradhoff, Matt Turner, Anthony Seals, David C. Thomas, and Edward W. Smith. Them are all the victims of Jeffrey Domner, and I just know the families out there were heartbroken. Because you would never think your child, you will lose your child. You know what I'm saying? Especially to the hands of a white man that's just insane. You know what I'm saying? So, say their name because it's not forgotten. No matter how long ago it was, it's not forgotten. You get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. And I feel for those families because he messed up so many people's lives. And you know how many people testified against him? I don't understand. And then his dad, what made me mad about his dad was his dad tried to make money off of it like by writing a book and stuff and i feel like that was wrong in so many ways you get what i'm saying making money off of it and then at one point in the show i had seen that he had fans and it was actually appraising him and stuff and he felt good about it. this is way before he started getting close to the guy he felt good about himself for doing what he did and all that and i don't know i just don't know how somebody can be that cruel can be that insane to cut people apart rape them while they're dead you know what i'm saying drug them kill them and store their body in their house i don't understand how somebody can do that i just don't understand I don't understand. I feel for the woman that was um his neighbor because she had to, even though she didn't see it physically, she still had to hear it, think about it, smell it. You get what I'm saying? And her word, like, it's just like they was ignoring her. They wasn't taking her word for it. So she just had to sit down and dare it. I feel for her because I know that was painful and I know that's traumatic to go through. And then it's a summer fact of it is he came to her apartment one time in the show and said well he offered her a sandwich and everybody kept making jokes about it saying it was a butt sandwich you know this and this but when you realize in that scene that there was some a part of somebody's body he was trying to give her and then he was sitting up there like being so nonchalant and sarcastic about the matter about his apartment being stink and stuff like that and you can tell she was scared for her life but she wasn't trying to show it because baby she was a strong black woman a strong black woman that's gonna stand her ground she might was scared of him behind closed doors, but when she got in front of people or in front of him, she didn't show him. And I feel for her. I really do. And I'm so glad they burned that, well, not burned it. They um, demolished that building because so much is happening up in there and all them people had to endure it. And all them people had to go, you know, what's the word? Had to go by, go by in life. Just trying to ignore what's happening in front of them because the police don't want to listen because they're black or something like that and i feel for those people like when i watched that i literally cried because i feel so bad for those people that had to endure that i feel so bad for the victims i feel so bad for the families i feel so bad i just don't know how somebody can be so insane to do it i don't know i don't know I'm going to consider this as a, consider this as a true crime episode, okay? So give me some feedback on what you think about this episode, and let me know some more topics you want me to do, or let me know if you want me to do some more true crimes or some conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Because baby, 
I'm in love with stuff like that. I love stuff like that. Okay? So let me know if you want me to do some more. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Lock Black Girl, where we talked about the true crime story of Jeffrey Dahmer. Who his names give me the chill. But anyways, Jeffrey Dahmer, let me know how you feel about this episode and if you want more like this. Don't forget to like, rate, and comment on any podcast app. You can reach me on any social media at Lock Black Girl. Leave me a little sweet message or comment or something like that. Until next time.